kids! Welcome back to our online class. This is Teacher Yan, and I'm your science teacher. So today, we're going to continue discussing about the scientific process. So again, the scientific process is grouped into three types. What are these three types? We have uh, the scientific method. The second one is the science process skills and the third one is the scientific mind okay so last week we are finished with the scientific method right and now we are now ready to move on to the scientific process skills okay so for this video we're going to talk about the science process skills now before we continue we have some vocabularies for you to better understand our topic Okay, so the first word is skills. A skill is the power or the ability to perform a task well, especially because of a training or practice. Okay, now, the next one is observe. Observe. Observe is to watch carefully. Observe is to watch carefully. And the third vocabulary word is diagrams. Diagrams. Diagrams are drawings that show arrangement and relation. These are examples of diagrams. So, what are scientific process skills? These are tools used by scientists to search knowledge, to answer questions, and solve problems. Okay, so these skills are needed by scientists to do their work. So there are 14 scientific process skills. They are sorted into two groups. So what are these groups? The first one is the eight basic science process skills, which includes first, observing, the second one is classifying, the third one is measuring, the fourth one is organizing data and communicating, the fifth one is inferring, the sixth one is predicting and using numbers, and the last one is using space or time relationships. Okay, so the next group is called the six integrated science process skills, which includes identifying and controlling variables next interpreting data and making conclusions next experimenting the next one is defining operationally formulating hypothesis and the last one is modeling okay so we are going to discuss more about this as we move on so let's start with observing Observing is a science process skill used in gathering information about objects and events. So your observations are statements or your state statements, I should say, are based from what you see, are based from what you taste, based from what you smell, based from what you touch and what you hear. Okay? So, the next one is measuring. In measuring objects, we use tools and instruments to find out okay, how long, how heavy, or how much something is. So, these are some uh, measuring tools that we could use. We have the weighing scale. We use a weighing scale to use measure our weight, to know our weight. We use the measuring tape. We can also use the ruler and the measuring cup. Okay, so these are just some of the many measuring tools. So next, we have the organizing data and communicating. So what is all about this? This refers to the systematic arrangement of collected data so that it becomes easy to understand. When we gather data from experiment, we need to put into simple ways for other people to understand better. Okay, let's try to make use of this example of chart. Okay, so we have here uh, three types of consumers in um, a food chain. So the first one is herbivores, the second one is the carnivores, 
And the third one is omnivores, which eat both plants and meat. Herbivores, these are some examples of animals that only eat plants. It's like horses, just like cows and elephants. Next, examples of omnivores are chickens, dogs, and cats. Examples of carnivores are falcons, they only eat meat. Even a lion only eat meat and even tiger. When you make use of this kind of chart, um, other people can better understand your collected data. The next one is modeling. Modeling is to create models as a way to explain things that we study. This means that we can share the data using diagrams, again from the diagrams that I showed a while ago, the charts, the tables, graphs, equations, or even essays. Okay, so these are some different types of models. Okay, let's start with a model of an aquatic ecosystem. Okay, this is an example of a model of an aquatic ecosystem. The next one is a model of a butterfly's life cycle. As you can see, it is made by students. Okay, the third one is a model of frog's skeleton. The fourth one is the model or a model of a volcanic eruption. Again, it is also made by students. The fifth one is a model of the traveling of sound through a medium. Next, we have the model of a plant's growth. Okay, so those are some examples of models. Next, we have using space or time relationships. So, this is to find the relationship between one-dimensional, two-dimensional, and three-dimensional objects. Okay, let's have this as an example. One-dimensional objects are lines. Next, two Ds are triangles, um, square, circle, and rectangles because they have two dimensions like length and width. And we have the three dimensionals. Examples are cone, cube, cylinder, and sphere. Now, there are two types of space relationship. So the first one is space-space relationship. The second one is space-time relationship. Okay, so space-space relationship is a relationship between the spaces filled by objects. While space-time relationship is a relationship between the spaces filled by objects at a given time. At a given time, like for example... Okay, let's have this as an example, a relationship between the um, positions of two objects. Let's have school and hospital, for example. So, when I say the hospital is located east of the school or vice versa, the hospital is located west of the school. We talk about the positions of two objects. Next, we have also this one. This is a relationship between an object's position and time. Okay, this is to find the position of a moving object as time goes by. For example, if the sun rises in the east, as you can see here in the picture, after six hours, after six hours, the sun changes its position. And now, it is right above the house of the girl at 12 noon. So, we talk about the position of an object with time, within a given time. Okay? So, that's it. Predicting. Predicting it is a making of statements of what will happen in the Future, Like, for example, when we look at the dark clouds, we might think that it will rain, right? We think that it will rain, so that is called prediction. You are predicting what will happen in the future based on what we see. Now, for your activity, let's have this one. Okay, so this is a picture of the places in the community. The grocery store is located in the south of the school. 
It is located in the south of the school. What science process is used? So, what science process skill is used? It is space or time relationship. Good. So, the next example is Jack uses a magnifying glass to study the leaves. What scientific skill is used by Jack? Jack is blank the leaves. Jack is observing. Jack is observing. Next, Rose uses a height ruler to find her height. Rose uses uh, what scientific skill? Can you guess? It's measuring. Wait, it's measuring. Rose is measuring her height. Okay? So, that is the end of our video. For your activity, you can open your book to page 4 and answer the questions there. So, that is the end. Thank you so much and I hope to see you very soon. Goodbye!